So firstly, thank you. Thank you for being here. I'm curious how you are right now. Like, no. what, is, what is today like for you? Oh, I'm so exhausted. <laughs> I just spent three days in Denver airport sleeping on benches and the floor and everything. How come? Oh, airlines. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone's overwhelmed. No, it was just awful. Well, I, I look at that smile. I think about how wired tired you must be, but I look yeah. at that smile. And that's the impression I've had of you, I think, my entire life is, you know, this big, broad smile. And so, like, what is behind that, or who's behind that right now for you? What, my smile? Yeah. Gosh, I don't know. I'm kind of the same way as I was when I was a little kid. Um, uh, very young, I learned that sometimes grown-ups are wrong and kids are right. For instance, I was told I couldn't be a musician because I couldn't read music. Therefore, I, you can't be a Come musician. You know, yeah, I wasn't allowed to be in band or chorus or anything. No. And I was told I couldn't be indigenous because there aren't any more around here. And when somebody comes up to me and says something that to me is um, just kind of not, not right on, yeah. I've always had a curiosity and I, I make it fun to find out how it could be made better. And that does something for me. And I hope it comes through in songs and things. It's mm -hmm. really not deliberate or anything, but I do. I have a positive attitude. I, I want to show you a clip, if I can. This is oh. you. It's in the 60s, and it's an interview you gave to CBC. Oh, wow. If there's one single thing I'm trying to do for the Indians as a composer, it's to inform the white community and explain the way things really were because I I think that it's about time that we start to raise a generation of Canadian kids and American kids who realize that nations like individuals make mistakes and that mistakes must be corrected if proper and straight growth is ever to be resumed and and so what I'm trying to do is to inform the people. Mm -hmm. what, is, what does it feel like to watch her, to watch you like that. <laughs> My well, voice like, goes higher. <laughs> 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 Let's see if I can talk like that now. <laughs> no, but how? No, that's the way I have felt all along. But it's not just me. I know. We've all been feeling that way. But I have a platform, so I've been, I've been in a position to shoot my mouth off and say things. Mm -hmm. It's always a, a delicate call as to what you bring up in what setting. Starwalker, he's a friend of mine. You know, people think sometimes of Indian people, they tend to think in terms of you know, braves and warriors and only young men. Because what I'm talking about is the right of a person in his or her own country to, um, to exist. Before uh, Columbus uh, ever got lost on our shores and we went down to rescue him, um, <laughs> before any of that ever came about, you know, we were in uh, very close contact with the great creator of all things. Watching other interviews you have given over the years, as a journalist, I find it really uncomfortable because I can see you being open and being strong, and yet I, sometimes I see a bit of a dismissal or or not really hearing mm -hmm. you. The little Indian girl must be mistaken. Kind of. Yeah. And yeah, I, and she's nice and she's cute. We like her. Right. But she's really mistaken. She. It can't be true. Dear God, tell me that doesn't still happen to you. Of course, it happens all the time. It happens every day about a lot of things. Because, you know, there's so many gazillions of human beings, so many minds, so many experiences. And in being an educator, as opposed to a mm -hmm, kind mm -hmm. of activist, <laughs> mm -hmm. to do it through music and art, it does happen. Um, because the public doesn't know. Now that the longhouses breed superstition, you force us to send our toddlers away to your schools where they're taught to despise their traditions. You forbid them their languages, then further say. You know, I guess we're just a little past a year out from when Tecumoops to Shwepmik First Nation talked about the rediscovery of these graves. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering, do you remember what went through you? Because it it's not news. I mean, you've no, been talking about news. this forever. No, I, I was glad that the information was out. Here's my attitude. The, bad, the good news about the bad news is that more people know about it. Right. See? So, of course, I was, I was heartbroken like everybody else and horrified. But it's, it's not as though I didn't know. We all know. Mm -hmm. Indigenous people, we know. We live next to those graveyards and those schools. Our, our people tell us what has gone on, and the only people who didn't know have been the perpetrators. One of the things we're talking about is, will 
will or won't the Pope show up this summer, you know, to, to make the apologies? The uncertainty, of course, is, is because of his health, right? We just don't know. And the airlines. And then, well, there's that. But, but mostly we don't know how he is. Yes. And I'm thinking of all the work that you have done to get people, I mean, as you used to saying, you know, to finally open your big eyes. What do you think that apology will ultimately mean? Well, the apology is just a beginning, of course, mm -hmm. and I really like him. I mean, I think if we have a chance to make things better, he could very much be a part of it and be an inspiration to a lot of people. What's really um, key to the Pope and the slaughter of the indigenous millions over the last 500 years, what's behind it and made people like generations before the Pope think that that was okay is the doctrine of discovery. The doctrine of discovery essentially says it's okay if if you're a European explorer, <laughs> a white guy holding something that means Christianity, you can go anywhere in the world and you can either convert people and enslave them mm -hmm. or you gotta kill them. I really would hope that he would help to rescind the doctrine of discovery as mm. just make it go away. You know, what I've been trying to do for years, uh, I've been working with uh, uh, the Canadian Museum for Human Rights in Winnipeg. What ought to be there when you walk in there is the electric chair from St. Anne's Residential School. I mean, children were tortured with cattle prods and electric chairs, and I've been trying very hard for a long time because they want my guitar strap and they want handwritten hmm. lyrics to, the, you know, they want happy, showy things, you know. But I want them to put the damn electric chair right there and to actually show people the doggone doctrine of discovery, which is centuries old, and it doesn't affect you, but it's still affecting me. Like a young woman or whether you're a man, sometimes you got to pay to stand just because you think you can. You got to run, you got to run. You had a chance to, to decide what you're most proud of? No, I've just been here. <laughs> just surviving. No. I don't think so. I, I'm always looking forward. I know. I am. I'm always looking forward. I, you know, when you're on a project and you're writing, I've been writing a lot of kids' books, or when you're writing songs or something, you're so into it. I really have so much fun. I'm like a kid when I'm doing whatever it is that I'm doing. I'm there because I want to be there, because basically for me it's play. Listen, thank you very, very much, Kara. <laughs> oh, thank Kara. you. <laughs>